Hi everyone, how's it going? So in this video, I will tell you about the six books that I read this year and I absolutely love them. So if you're kind of like struggling to start reading again or you haven't just found the book that you really enjoy, probably that's the video you should watch. But before we start, please put thumbs up to this video and subscribe to this channel because it really means a lot to me. It helps to grow my channel and I know that you are watching and you're enjoying this content. So probably one thing worth noting is that I read all the books from my pocketbook it's not an ad and i know that a lot of people they read from kindle but i chose this one especially because it's rose gold design and i really like it and obviously because we travel a lot i don't have this you know option to have all of the books that i read with me and put it in my bag because books are very heavy. If you didn't know that, books are really heavy. So the first book is called Sense. I think it's a relatively new book. I think it just came out this year in 2022. And it's kind of like a compilation of different facts, funny facts, interesting facts that might enhance your life. So if you didn't know that food actually tastes 11% better if you eat from heavy cutlery or that white wine tastes a little bit better, to be more precise, 14% better if you drink it whilst you're listening to Blondie. Especially one, I think the book starts with the fact that if you drink coffee from the red cup, not from the blue one or any other color, it will taste more rich, more delicious. The way the book works is that the author takes the whole day and kind of like breaks down all the day-to-day -day routine that we have, how to get up properly in the morning, which perfume better to use if you go on interview or on a date. So if you enjoy reading those kind of facts that are aimed to help you live everyday life, I definitely think you'll enjoy reading this. The second book is called The Source. I think one of my friends recommended me reading this and it's kind of like the motivational self-help kind of a book. It reminded me of Dave Asprey's Superhuman, I think the book called, because he also mentioned one thing that I really kind of like stuck in my mind is that you should put a spoon of coconut oil into your morning coffee or tea. And the author of the book, The Source, explains why it works, that it really helps to be a little bit more effective, more productive, especially during the first half of the day. A lot of people probably heard about the so-called dream boards, but a lot of people also do not know how to do them properly or they just do not believe in those kind of things. If you do believe, if you're willing to try, because I did it multiple times, I think for three consecutive years, it really shows you what do you want to go for, what are your dreams, it kind of like reminds you about this every single day whenever you see it you know, somewhere in your apartment or even on the phone screen. So if you want to know how to do the proper dream board and why it's supposed to help you to achieve your goals, definitely read the source because it might help you. But if you want to have a more scientific kind of approach to your life and want to see why some of those things work and some of the things do not work, I really recommend reading the book called Science of Fate. I think the name of this book is kind of like speaks for itself and I really want to read one quote because it's very hard for me to remember it. So the quote goes, we are sold the concept of unlimited agency and capability, a vision of free will on steroids that rejects the idea of constraints, whether biological or socioeconomic. So in simple words, it just means that a lot of things we're told are true, but not for everyone, because everyone has different DNA, different upbringing, different backgrounds, financial, biological, whatever. So it's not true to say that every person can achieve anything. This book kind of like shows you a more realistic way of looking at things. Also, the thing I remember is that it talks about the be endorphins. So it says that a lot of people who are considering themselves as extroverts, they tend to have more B endorphins. That means that they have to socialize more in order to fulfill all of those B endorphins. Don't exactly remember how it works and what's going to be the scientific way of putting this thing, but I consider myself as an extrovert slash introvert and I have a lot of friends that are truly 100% extroverts and for me it's always 
kind of like not questionable i'm just curious why do you have to communicate with so many people but in this book it kind of like explains that there is a scientific explanation to this another thing that i really loved and i think it came out in 2016 or 17 so it's not a recently published book but i think most of you heard about this it's called the atomic habits so a lot of you probably heard about this phrase you know fake it till you make it and it really never worked with me because how i can fake something because i know consciously i understand like it's artificial it's fake so i never really liked this phrase in the first place but he talks about the same thing but just from a different angle he explains a situation when somebody offers you a cigarette and a non-smoker would just refuse to have it because he would say something like i don't smoke thank you but the ex-smoker would say something like oh i quit smoking thanks for offering and the difference between those two people is that the non-smoker he would never even have this thought of having any cigarettes so this suggestion this offering would just not be any sort of like relatable to him but for a smoker for an ex-smoker he accepts the fact that he used to be a smoker but now he just kind of like doesn't want to or he's working on his willpower but it's just mentally it's a very different approach so if you want to become a non-smoker you should act like a non-smoker in the first place you know what i mean kind of like present yourself as a person that has never smoked before so you cannot relate to any issues that smokers have or you would just never consider a cigarette in the first place, you know? Oh, and I just remembered about the second thing that really stuck in my mind and I really want to like share it with you guys is that in general, the people that know me, my friends, they would say like I'm a very honest person, a very straightforward person. What I'm trying to say here is like one of my values is to be honest and transparent and straightforward, right? And I obviously want to have those values and translate this into my communication with other people but the author of atomic habits kind of like makes you ask yourself if you are always honest with other people why would you ever be dishonest with yourself for my own example I wanted to exercise every single day on my abs just a little bit maybe like 30 minutes per day but I sometimes not always but I found often I found excuses not to do this and he means like if you want to change your habit obviously the first thing you need to know you need to be consistent with that but if you're lying to yourself by you know coming up with all of those excuses why you cannot do this exercise today you're not being honest and you're not sticking to your own values and for me like consciously it was kind of like crucial to understand to realize that if I'm being honest with most people, with all people that I interact with, why would I be not honest with the most important person in my life, which is myself? So I really like that idea. And after that, no jokes, I'm exercising every single day except weekends. Another book that's probably worth mentioning is the book called The Third Door. I think one of my friends also recommended me reading this. And it's just kind of like a biography slash a self-help book. The author talks about his experience of meeting very famous people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and then I think lots and lots of them, Tim Ferriss. For me personally, reading this book was more like repetition of something that I learned myself years and years ago like if you have a certain goal you don't have to be afraid to ask people for help even celebrities because they're also ordinary people like we are they're just a little bit more busy and that's why author offers you different templates for emails that he wrote himself when he was trying to reach out to those famous people because when I was living in London and in LA and I was trying to grow on YouTube and I attended a lot of YouTube events or blogger events there were influencers or other celebrities and I was never afraid to come up and ask for a picture or offer a collaboration even if it wasn't successful it didn't really matter for me talking to those people like the fact itself was that I'm confident enough to do those kind of things so if you're struggling with your confidence or if you're struggling you know to communicate with people that you think in your head are better than you you should definitely read this book because it might change your mindset and you know last but not least it's the book it's one of those books that you randomly find in the bookstore in the airport and it was one of those it's called the disappearing act 
What I remember is that author is pretty famous and one of her books was already made into films and this one, The Disappearing Act, is about to be filmed by one of the major studios in Hollywood. So why I really enjoyed reading this book is because I used to live in LA, as some of you might know, I went to all of those auditions, I was also like, you know, a struggling actor and just being a creative person you always have those struggles, you know, how to earn money, how to become more successful, how to gain more followers. So if you can relate to those kind of things, you would be able, probably like me, to project yourself onto the antagonist of the book. But the book itself, the genre, is it's a detective story. And I love detective stories, especially a fast paced like this one. Quickly, she moves to LA, she lives in a beautiful building, and she goes to one of the auditions, but later the girl that asked her to pay for her parking she disappears and another girl pretends to be the one that asks her to pay for the parking, something like that. It's probably one of those books that I read in less than three days. Like literally, I started reading this and I was like, I didn't want to finish it today because I was so curious to find out who actually another girl was. Like, why would she ever have to pretend that she went on this uh, audition? So I think it's gonna be it. But I thought about sharing a little bit more books. I leave all the book covers of the books that I'm planning to read in the nearest future in case you want to read them too. So now it's your chance to screenshot them if you haven't done it already. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it was useful and hope you enjoyed watching this because I love reading and I really want other people to read more. The books, especially in 2022, I think they're very unfortunately underestimated. I know that TikTok is the future, but books is our past, present and the future. I think it's actually a very good phrase. So I hope you're gonna have an amazing day. I hope that today, this evening, or maybe this morning, you would pick up your favorite book or probably one of those that I just recommend you and you will read a page and the second page and you would just continue reading because reading is amazing. I love you so much and see you soon in the next video. Bye.